Welcome to 5 Minutes in the Word, a daily devotional in the Word of God. Today on 5 Minutes in the Word, I want us to turn to Genesis chapter 37, and I want us to discuss today the story of Joseph being sold into slavery by his brothers. But before we get to the part where he is sold into slavery, I want us to kind of set the scene a little bit. So let's pick up our reading today in Genesis 37, starting in verse 1. It says, Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his, uh, of his old age. Also he made him a tunic of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. So here you're going to see at the age of 17, here Joseph has a very bad relationship with his other brothers. He is the favorite son. Uh, and here he has been given this uh, coat of many colors, and he is shown in great favoritism uh, by his father, uh, Jacob. So here we're going to see you know, what's going to happen uh, to kind of really just uh, kind of flame up their anger towards their brother. It says once again in verse 5, Now Joseph had a dream, and he told it to his brothers, and they hated him even more. So he said to them, uh, please hear this dream, which I have dreamed. Uh, there we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold, my sheaf arose and all, and also stood upright. And indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheaf. And his brothers said to him, shall you indeed reign over us? Or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. But this is not his only dream. You go into verse 9, then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, Look, I have dreamed another dream, and this time the sun, the moon, and, the even, uh, and the eleven stars bowed down to me. So he told it to his father and his brothers, and his father rebuked him and said to him, What is this dream that you have dreamed? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? Uh, and his brothers envied him, and his father kept the matter in mind. So here we have a situation in which, you know, he is telling about all these dreams, and the brothers already don't like him too much. And now uh, he is kind of indicating that they're going to, at some point in time, they're going to bow down before him. Then his brothers went to feed his father's flock, starting there in verse 12, uh, in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, are you not your brothers? Uh, are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, "Here I am." Then he said to him, "Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks, and bring back word to me." So he sent him out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and uh, there he was wandering the field. And the man asked him, saying, "What are you seeking?" So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me uh, where they are feeding uh, their flocks. So the man's going to speak to him in verse uh, 17. And the man said that they have departed from here. For I heard they say, let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after, the, after his brothers and found them in Dothan. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near, they conspired against him to kill him. And they said to one another, look, this dreamer is coming. Come, therefore, let us now kill him and cast him into some pit, and we shall say some wild beast has devoured him. We shall see what, uh, what will become of his dreams. But Reuben heard of it, and he delivered him out of their hands and said, Let us not kill him. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the pit uh, which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers, that they stripped Joseph of his tunic, the tunic of many colors uh, that was on him. And they took him and cast him into the pit, and the pit was empty. Uh, there was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked, and there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead uh, with their camels, bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his, his blood? Come and let us sell him uh, to the Ishmaelites, and let our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers, uh, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brothers listened. Then the Midianite traders passed by. So the brothers pulled Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites uh, for 20 shekels of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. Now, 
Here we're going to see that this whole plot, this whole plan has just been fueled by the anger and the jealousy and just the outrage they had towards their brother. Now, uh, Reuben did step in uh, and he he uh, sought a way to try to spare his brother's life and really to spare him in total. But as we see there in verse 29, uh, that Reuben, uh, you know, was not necessarily a part of this selling. That Reuben returned to the pit. Indeed, Joseph was not in the pit and he tore his clothes and he, and he returned to his brothers and said, the lad is no more, and I, where uh, where shall I go? So you can see this just really uh, is getting beside Reuben. So they took Joseph's tunic, killed a goat, and dipped it in the tunic of the blood. And they sent the tunic of many colors, uh, and they brought it to their father and said, we have found this. Do you know whether it is your son's tunic or not? And so... Here we're going to see that in this story, in this uh, you know um, interaction between Joseph and his brothers, it's filled by anger, it's filled by hatred, it's filled by jealousy, uh, and even leads to not, not only wanting to kill him, but to selling him off into slavery, uh, to lying about what happened to him to their father, and really sets them up for this uh, big reveal later on in the book of Genesis when it's found out that Joseph is actually still alive. But here, I want us to see within this story today uh, that God was able to work through all of this. Uh, God was able to work through, uh, through the life of uh, Joseph, uh, that God had a plan and had a purpose for him, uh, and that as we see there uh, in the end of the book of Genesis, Joseph is actually a deliverer of uh, someone that delivers them from the famine, delivers them from uh, the, the uh, terrible times in which uh, their family was living, um, and it's something that is, he's going to show himself to be someone that is faithful to God and God blesses him because of that. And that's something that I want us to learn in our lives today too, that we too need to be faithful to God like Joseph uh, was faithful throughout his, uh, throughout his life, uh, especially the life he lived while he was in, in slavery uh, and, in e and in Egypt. Uh, and God was with him through it all. And so today, uh, let us learn to live a life for God uh, and knowing that God will be with us.